Hey everybody, and welcome to this Friday's Illustration Masterclass with me, Kyle Webster. I'm glad you're all here, and today we are going to be doing a winter monster sort of creative exercise where I just want to talk a little bit about character design, which is something that everybody enjoys, I think, um, and show you a little bit of how I might go about doing something like this if somebody said design a winter, a winter monster. Um, some things I might consider in going through that creative exercise and in doing so, I'm also going to be talking a little bit about um, some Photoshop techniques and some brushes that I would use for this kind of thing. We'll see how far we get today. It's only an hour class, so um, I might not get as far as I want. And we may perhaps continue this in a later class where I might take it to maybe a more finished state like a painting. But today, we're just going to be looking at the first part of the process, which is just coming up with ideas, thinking about what this character might look like. Um, we also might talk a little bit about style because the style you choose, of course, is going to have a huge impact on how your character looks. Um, and when I talk about style, I also mean not just sort of the um, the technique and, that you're applying to draw, like if it's more realistic or painterly or what have you, um, but maybe also who is the audience you're designing for so in today's case, I'm going to be doing something a little more sort of uh, for, for an older audience, um, try to make the monster a little more scary, a little more um, complex and sophisticated than something that I would be doing if it were for a very young audience where it might be a little more cartoony, a little more friendly and less monstrous, if you will. Um, really, that's gonna be the focus. So why don't we get to it? I'm gonna uh, move over to Photoshop here. And here we go. Um, all right, now bear with me one moment. I just have to refresh my chat because it's seems to have frozen up on me. And while I'm mentioning the chat, if you are watching over on YouTube or on Twitter, um, please be sure to um, head on over to Behance, which is be.net slash Adobe Live. And the reason I mention this is because I'm not going to be reading comments on YouTube or on Twitter, even though you can watch there if you wish. Uh, so if you have any questions while I'm doing this about anything having to do with the process, about Photoshop, about brushes, or whatever, you can do that over on Behance, and that's be.net slash live. So that's where you want to do that. I see some folks are joining us over here. Now I've got my chat cooking. Um, and let's say hello to some people. Wade, how are you? And Steven and Laura and Umicorn and Kiki. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. And Mercurial, hi. And Steve, Clarissa, nice to see you. And Bliss is here. Oh, all these nice people. Lizette, um, Christelle, hope I'm not missing anybody here. Thank you for joining. Bernadette, hello. Gareth, hello. Uh, we're going to get started now. So you can all see my screen, and it is time to get to work. Um, I want to start sketching with a pencil. And one of the things you may notice that I've done here before I do any drawing is I've actually added um, a bit of a tint to the the whiteness of the canvas you know to first open up a blank document i really don't like working on something that's just plain white it's just a personal preference it's just too bright and too empty for me so the first thing i did was i just tinted it a little bit i used a, a darker color than white so here's the white you can see just how glaring that is and how ridiculously bright so i darken that down a little bit and here i add a little paper texture layer and the simplest way to do that is i simply added a layer and I went up to Edit, Fill, and here I just selected uh, from my patterns um, one of my paper textures that I like to use. Um, and this one is Kyle Paper Pulpy, and uh, you can find that texture um, in a lot of the custom brushes that I use, um, or you can create your own, whatever you like. So I fill it with that, and then I just knock the opacity back to about 20% or thereabouts, you know? So whatever floats your boat, but that way it's just so nice for me to look at that and not see that bright white 
uh, canvas. It's, it's just too much for me. I don't like it. it. Hurts my eyes too, I have to say. I don't think it's healthy for us to be staring at screens all the time. I mean, in fact, I'm sure of it. Um, so do your eyes a favor and, and knock, knock the brightness back just a little bit. For your information, I'm drawing on a Wacom Cintiq uh, 22 HD. And on the Cintiq, I actually have the brightness set at 50 percent if you can believe it and at 50 percent it's plenty bright i don't need it any brighter than that um it really for me is sort of a more real environment something that feels a little closer to what i might see in the physical world if i were using traditional media so keep that in mind save your eyeballs all right um yes yeah, steve i do have a, a free background paper texture if you want to grab it over on my gum road page. So if you're interested in that, just head over to kyletwebster.gumroad.com. Okay. And you can go snag that and enjoy it. I think there are three different darkness settings for that. Um, light, a medium, and a dark. All right. So to our character. So we're talking about a winter monster of some kind. And the elements I was thinking about were first uh, sticks, you know, like winter or branches, winter branches, branches that have uh, no leaves on them. Okay, so it'll look kind of like this. That's one detail I want to incorporate um, in the drawing. Another element is snow, so I want to have sort of some lumpy bits of snow, you know, and uh, See if I can make that work somewhere in the character. And, you know, this is not a necessary thing, but I just think, you know, obviously snow is a good thing to make a character out of. So some snowy bits and what goes hand in hand with the snow, of course, is the, is the ice. So I'm thinking about ice as well. And for ice specifically, I'm thinking more sort of like these kind of icicles that are kind of poking out here and there and um, try and try and make those part of the design as well you can see you know every now and then they might get a little a little more pointy and a little sharper vary up the size and so on so these kinds of icy bits like you see here I think will will be interesting. These are some of the design elements I'm thinking about using for this character. Okay, so here I am just trying to sort of figure out the language I could use for drawing those. We're just talking mainly about line work here. Like what what is what are some ways I could draw this without much else other than a pencil, you know? Um, and then what are some other things? Well. You know, so I, I had this idea of sort of doing like a Frosty the Snowman kind of a monster. So could be like a an old sort of a bowler kind of hat that would that would be be part of the design as well, right? Something like that, um, or maybe even a carrot. So carrots might come into play. Who knows? So just kind of thinking about that as a shape, right? So usually we think about the nose, but maybe like fingers could be the carrots, right? Grr. Scary long carrot fingers, you know? Um, anyway, so now um, here are some design elements just to think about. And uh, I'll talk about the um, brush that I'm using here. So if you have a Adobe uh, Creative Cloud membership, you have access to many, 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 many brushes. Um, and uh, you also get free brush updates about every quarter, you know, another 20 or 30 brushes at a time, which is great. Um, a lot of bang for your buck there, especially when you consider that uh, Photoshop plus, plus Lightroom subscription plus Adobe Portfolio is only $9.99 a month in North America. Um, $9.99. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's 20 bucks. But I'm here to tell you, 
There is an option called the photography plan, which is 10 bucks a month, basically. Pretty amazing deal. Um, so what you do is if you want to get those brushes, you go over to your uh, brushes panel here and you come up to the top right corner, the little hamburger menu we call it, and come on down to get more brushes. Look at that. If you tap on that, all you have to do is sign in with your ID and then you have access to all these brushes and you download as many as you want and just enjoy those. All right, so um, here's the brush I'm using. This is in the fall 2021 brush set, which was released uh, this past October. And in it, there are two concept pencils. There's concept pencil and concept pencil soft. So the one I'm using right now is the concept pencil and it's, it's got a really nice line to it. Um, but you can also kind of do some nice shady stuff with it if you sort of tilt it a little bit on its side. Um, and I just like it for drawing. The concept pencil soft is a little larger and definitely has a different feel to it. Obviously a softer feel, hence the name. So if you want to do more loosey goosey kind of quick work, um, I think you'll feel good with that one as well. So, so there you go. All right, so there are just a few design elements to think about here. We got a hat, we've got our, our branches here, our winter sort of um, branches with no, no leaves on them, right? Got the snowy bits here, a little snow here and there. Some more soft, kind of a softer shape to everything there, right? Try to keep that a little softer if we can. And then we have our, our icicles, our sort of icy bits, and those are sharper and more sort of pointy, you know? See what I'm doing here? Make, making straighter lines and drawing faster with my hand to make that happen. Um, these are some things I want to think about. All right. Now, um, here's something that I really enjoy with this kind of work, and that's using our symmetry tool in Photoshop. It allows you to draw on either the left or the right side of a line and have that instantly get mirrored on the opposite side. So we're gonna use that for this first step where I'm just gonna sort of design the, um, the character facing forward and get the proportions and get the idea straight. And uh, let's see if we have any questions before I go any further. Um, Anika, you tried out some other pencils rather than the default pencil and fresco. They're so good. Great, thanks. Well, I love the default pencil and fresco, but I also like to use different pencils for different things, and there are plenty to use in uh, the Photoshop brush set, especially in the Mega Pack drawing box. But um, but here as well, this this latest uh, 2021 brush set has uh, fall 2021. Part of me has a nice. Uh, a nice one that I like to like to use as well. Um, and let's see, any other questions? I see somebody asking about, oh, that's something else, okay. Yeah, dark mode is good for your eyes, I agree. Lower the brightness, use dark mode, save your eyeballs. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's turn this symmetry on. Now, if you have a brush selected, you notice I've got this brush tool. Okay, so I'm, I'm ready to draw. One of the things you'll see in this tools menu up here at the top, right, your settings for that tool is this little butterfly. I'm gonna tap on that butterfly and here you see the options for a bunch of different kinds of uh, symmetry modes. We're gonna use the most basic, which is just vertical. I tap on that and it's going to reveal what's actually a path in Photoshop. If I were to open up my paths, I would see it right here, vertical symmetry. But all I'm going to do is hit return on my keyboard, okay, and, or enter. And what that does is it sets that on the screen. So there it is. And that means that everything I draw here now on this side is going to be mirrored and vice versa, okay? So let's get started with this drawing. Now, you may have seen I posted a sort of a rough sketch of an idea I had um, with these design elements over on Twitter. And this is the character I want to play around with where I want him to be sort of hunched forward and I want his back to, from almost every angle and from every pose, to sort of be raised up above his head. So that if you were looking at him from the side, I'll just disable the symmetry for a moment. If you're looking at him from the side, like I'd want his back to be up here and his head to be kind of like here. Okay, and then, you know, big arms like this. And then 
his legs like this, you know? So this is the face. And this is the back. And I want to have some branches, some tree stuff coming off this way. There's his hand right there. And then maybe off of the top of the arms, like some spiky bits of of uh, icicles and whatnot, you know? And um, then have those move down to less and less sort of lo shorter, shorter bits of ice. And just kind of like blocks, little blocks of ice kind of making up the arms. Um, and I had this idea of, of having him wear, I don't know why, but like sort of a, a ski jumper, you know, like um, there's a name for them. I think it's called a ski bib or whatever. You know, they're kind of just basically overalls. So have the overalls come on like this down to the bottom. And then maybe like a little hat, a little Frosty the Snowman kind of hat there. Uh, so that's kind of the basic idea. And let's turn our symmetry mode on and let's try and make this happen. So as I said, up at the top, I want that, that back shape to be there. So it's kind of like a rounded triangle, if you will, right? Like this is sort of that shape of the back from the front. Uh, the back from the front, <laughs> hey, fun with words. And then uh, here is sort of like, there's our head right there. The head shape right there. And then I want these, these icicles to kind of poke out this way. Kind of just all over the place. A little shorter here as we get in towards the sort of trapezius area and the neck and whatnot, but, but then they get progressively a little longer and a little more sort of spiky as we move out over the shoulders, you know, like that. And just the general, general shape of the arms is like out and down like this. So I'm sort of following this rhythm here of just come down and around like that, all right? I want those forearms to be kind of skinny and longer than the upper part of the arms. So I want the, the arms to just kind of fall about here, the upper arms to stop about there. Um, and then these long sort of, could even have like an icicle or two make their way like down around here where the elbow is or something. Right, kind of cool. All right, we want these angles to be different. So this one's kind of going down this way, this one kind of going out that way, you know about that as I go and he's sort of hunched forward a little bit and then so we're kind of showing that the body is like the torso is moving away from us with these these half ellipses I just want to show that roundness you know and then we drop down here and I just want to have the legs kind of small kind of short so that the arms Kind of um, coming down this way. And there's one hand and another. These are the hands. But the legs just kind of pretty small, like this. You know? We have those ski bibs or whatever coming down this way following that chest like that that shape of that chest there and then dropping down here and um they're gonna kind of bunch up here where the body is bent right at the waist there And then here where we have the 
the leg bending, get that, that area just under the knee. Some, even it's never too early to like suggest some of these things like the way the fabric gets pulled around the forms right this kind of stuff um, you see how great it is to work in this mode this symmetry mode because you, you don't have to worry about drawing everything twice and in, in this kind of situation, you're just trying to design something, right? You're not worried about um, the fact that, of course, nothing is perfectly symmetrical and that would make your, your drawing kind of boring, right? That's that's not a concern at this point. We're just trying to get the design down and that's why the symmetry is helpful for that. Um, I hadn't even thought about what his feet would be, but, you know, could be something where, you know, there's like winter boots or something over the pants, you know, something like that. That might be the way to go. Just some, some short little boots like this. Maybe the, the pants kind of bunch up. The bib, the ski bib thing bunches up there. That might be kind of nice. Keeps it simple. You know, I can, I can figure out how to Draw boots, I think. All right. So there you go. All right. Um, looks like a monster from Death Note. What is Death Note? I assume that's a comic or something. Huge eye socket. I don't know which area you're talking about, but... Um... Great. All right, now... What about this face? Let's zoom in for a minute. Um, so, you know, he's got to be scary. So, of course, I start with a brow that's, you know, angled from the inside out. Sort of an angry look, right? I think we just tuck the eyes right here so that they're, you know, they've got a lot of shadow from those brows right there and then the nose can be this stumpy thing here Should be kind of carved out of ice you can go even farther with this shape um, and then for the mouth what I wanted to do and I tried this in that sketch I, I tried earlier was sort of have it like go all the way across the bottom like it's basic like a like an entire section of the head that's visibly separated from the bottom jaw, you know? I thought that's kind of a cool way to do it. So when he opens his mouth, like you see that little section drop down. So it's, yeah, it's just like a whole separate area. Um, don't want to go too much detail there for now. I just want to make sure that that line is clear. Round that out a little bit. And then um, we're going to have a hat on him, sort of like a Frosty the Snowman kind of hat. Here I'm just thinking about like, this is more sort of like a side plane, you know? here and here, something like basically human head anatomy, but applying it to this snow monster thing, right? Not gonna have ears or anything for this guy, it's not important. Um, by the way, uh, you can hide this symmetry line if it's bothering you, that, that blue line, if it's really annoying, you can just hide it. Like, like when I get into these details here, I don't really wanna see that there, you know? So the hat probably going to sit about like here. So that feels pretty good to me. And that's that brim. And then we're just going to 
tuck the or pop pop the the top of that hat right here so there's our little sort of frosty the snowman hat we got okay So I imagine all of this being just like bits of ice just kind of clumping around. So little rocky, icy shapes here growing out of the snowy body. I think this whole area here is just soft and snowy basically, like all this area. And then even here, so like this sort of lumpy in the back, like snowy lumps. And it's from those snowy bits that um, the winter sticks and, and twigs or whatnot are going to grow out of that. Okay? Pause for questions here. Thanks, Christelle. Christelle says, I love this drawing even if it scares me. <laughs> We need this symmetry line in fresco, says Bernadette. Yes, Bernadette, symmetry is coming to fresco this year. Don't you worry. Thank you, Anastasia. That's very kind. Oh, Death Note is a Japanese film and comic. Well, I don't know anything about it, but there's just so much to, to watch right now. I can't keep up. Um... All right, cool, glad you learned something, um, Roxanne. All righty, so here we go. Let's do the sticks. So yeah, you saw my, my sketch earlier, like how I was drawing the sticks. And the main idea is I want the little branches to kind of do this sort of thing where they kind of go one, like one, and a two, you know? Occasionally there's like a rounder sort of a shape, but a lot of sort of long bits that are like what you see here, you know? And they just kind of all get sort of tangled up together here. <laughs> and have those growing off the back in various directions, right? Um, so there's that. Now, that's kind of it, right? This is sort of it for the design of this this person. Person? Monster. Um, if you wanted to, what you could do now is you could do an ink, you could ink over this um, and sort of feel your way through it that way. Uh, you could you could take the character and you could try and draw it at a different angle now that you sort of understand it from the front. You know, you could do a side view of this character um, profile and maybe even back or three quarter view. So what we you know call that is a turnaround where you'd do a study from all these different angles to sort of understand um, the character in three dimensions, if you will. Um, it's always a good good exercise. Helps you to really understand uh, what's going on with the design. And then you're more confident as you go forward and actually have to draw it in, in different poses. You know what I mean? So just sort of clearing that area where the eye is so we understand what we're seeing there. But okay, so that's that's an idea right there. This is one idea. Now here's another thing you can do. You can just sort of come through and 
clean up your silhouette and see what that does is it really really helps to make that stand out and and read really clearly I'm just using more pressure as I draw with the brush to do this honestly I'm not doing anything fancy didn't have to change the size or anything but this is a cool thing you can do as well just sort of outline it like that and get a feel for um, how that reads okay and what I usually do is not what I just did there I would actually do that on a separate layer so that I could then hide the sketch and just look at it that way so I'll just quickly show you how that might work and again huge time saver having this symmetry mode um, employed for this by the way anybody who watches my streams knows that if you hear beautiful violin music in the background it is because my children are practicing their violins so I've mentioned that many times on the show they are both highly accomplished violin players even though they are quite young amazed by what they're able to do and I never could do anything remotely that interesting or impressive at their age so good for them I'm proud but yeah that's what you hear if if you do hear it I don't know sometimes the microphone picks it up sometimes it doesn't okay so there's that basic silhouette now the only thing we're missing here is the Tree, uh, tree limbs and all that, but we can, you know, ignore those for now. So then I could hide the sketch and just look at that. Just be like, yeah, how does that look? You know, um, you may want to go a step further. What you could do is this kind of thing. You could sort of outline the uh, head just to see where it sits and look at it like this. Okay. All right. So there is our sketch. Now, if you're really happy with your design, you could move forward. Like I said, you could do profile, you could try some other things, um, or you could just jump right into doing a completely different design, right? We had some other, some we have the elements we, we wanna play with, these design elements like um, the, strict, the sticks and branches. We have the hat, we have the snow, we have the ice, we have the carrot, which I mentioned. Um, we didn't use the carrot in this design, but uh, you know, there are ways to, to do that, and it's, it's a different design, of course. So I think what I'll do now is show you another idea. Um, and what I'll do is I'll first turn off our symmetry. And as I did before, I just did a quick little sketch from the side view. This this time I might do like a sort of three-quarter view or something, but I think it'd be fun to just go in a completely different direction since what we've just done is sort of bulky and weighted and wide. Maybe we do something a little a little more slender and a little more angular. Um, makes you miss your violin, says Vanessa. Oh, I'm glad that you were a violinist yourself. That's cool. How do you hide the line, Clarissa? You go over here where it says hide symmetry. Hide symmetry. That's how you make it go away. Um... Yes, Wade does great work. I agree, Wade's illustrations are great. When you're gonna create an illustration, does it already exist in your imagination or do you build it according to the art development process? Uh, both, I mean, a lot of stuff happens because you're in the process of drawing. You wanna try something, you add it, just like that. Sometimes you have a sort of an idea in your head. When I knew I was gonna do this show for today, I was just thinking about those design elements which we talked about um, at the beginning, which were the sticks, the snow, the ice, the hat, the carrot, and just thinking about ways to combine those and, and use general body shape and then kind of attach those onto that body shape in an interesting way to assemble them into something interesting, if that makes sense. 
And we'll do the same thing now. So if I want to go with a more skinny kind of thing, um, you know, the, the head could be something that has those stick shapes, you know, coming out, whatever. That could be sort of the place where that comes from and then could go with this sort of skinnier sort of design. Maybe the eyes are up here. And then maybe right here, you could take, use our carrot, you know, have the carrot come out this way. Um, and then we could have the mouth down here. That's one idea like that. Or maybe you could have the jaw like this, like sort of like it's, you can actually see the gap between the upper part of the, between the top teeth and the, the upper part of the skull, so to speak. And then the, the lower jaw, like a skeleton, you know? I like that, that could be a cool thing right there. So we just have this gap right here. And we have the, the sticks growing out of the head like this, okay? We've got that, that carrot nose. And then we have our jaw where you can see that separation and that little space right there. Um, and then for the body, could be, I like, I'm, I'm always interested in longer arms. They're just more monstery and scary. So I'm not, never trying to like make the arms short. That just to me is never scary. So we could have more sticks for fingers here. I don't want it to look too much like a tree person, so maybe the sticks will have to go. You know, we don't want it to look like an ent. Um, so this I like, this I think could work. And then for the, for the body, maybe we go more snow kind of. Let's see what I can do with some. So even though this bit's a little skinnier, I wonder if I could Go with something more snowy. It's like dripping. Snow is just kind of melting on him. Like this, you know? And it just kind of comes out of the snow. You know what I mean? Sort of like this. That might be a better way to go. So it's a different, it's a different approach. Um, where we don't really have legs and so on. So, you know, to figure out like, how would it move? It just kind of slide around, I guess, in the snow and do its thing. 
that way. But I think that I think that's a pretty interesting way to do it right there. So you can see like that. What do y'all think about that? Um, <laughs> Steve says that Tyrannosaurus rexes are notoriously bad at making their beds because they can't reach down to tuck in the sheets. They do have short arms. Um, let's see. Do you have a backstory for this character? Any thoughts of its evolution? Raison d'être. Uh, nope. <laughs> Those are the kinds of things, if you're working on a production, you know, with a team, there's a lot of thoughts going to go into that um, because, you know, you're going to be doing a real story, you're going to be telling a story. They're going to have to have reasons for everything, more or less. Um, uh, when I do stuff like this, this is just me having fun. But, you know, if I were working in a situation where this this character or the other character, any character, needed to have a specific, uh, you know, reason for all all the things, all the decisions that I would make that would support a backstory or support the story. Um, of course, that makes sense. You know, you'd have to be keeping that in mind. And it's a good exercise to do it just even if you're not doing that kind of project. Sure, it's a good thing because it gives you ideas for why you make the decisions that you make. For me at this, at this stage and just doing this kind of a, a thing, what I'm doing is just trying to think about uh, shapes, <laughs> you know, like basic design stuff, shape language, you know, what, what looks nice with what, um, do those, do those shapes look good together? And of course I'm thinking of like materials. So this is like snow. So, uh, snow and then also some ice and then some tree bits and, and whatnot. But I think I'm just thinking about those basic things right now. I'm not really thinking about, oh, this character is here because, you know, 500 years ago, there was a curse that was put on this land and, you know, um, every January 5th, uh, this, this guy kind of comes out of the earth and terrorizes the live, the livestock in the barn, you know, I don't know what, okay. <laughs> but sure, people do think about that stuff. Of course they do. Just depends on, you know, why you would need to think of that. What I'm doing here is I'm just drawing to try and come up with interesting looking ideas and maybe they could be used uh, in a variety of different ways. Um, and I think a lot of times too with, with, with the production work and stuff, they do that. They'll say, you know, just go to town and they'll give you very little direction so that they get as many ideas as possible from the artists, you know. They'll say, snow monster, go. And then you just start drawing, you know. Something like in Frozen, um, whatever that character is, that ice snow monster or whatever. I'm sure like in the early stages of development, they're just like, all right, we have this monster. He's an ice or a snow monster or whatever. And he can't be too scary, but he has to be scary. You know, show us what you got. And then the artists have fun with that idea. All right, so here's, here's this guy. Now, with a sketch like this, you know, if you really like it and you want to go further with it, one of the things you could do is you could zoom in on something. So like the head, for example, I could say, oh, that's starting to look kind of interesting to me. So I could slide this over and I could say, I'm going to, I'm going to concentrate on that head. See if I can understand that better, you know, and I might like at about this scale, try and put that together, you know, and say, there's my sort of skull shape for that head, you know, um, like this and uh, you know right here at the very top is where I want the that carrot to sort of come out here so I would sort of throw that in there and then think about that weird idea of like the jaw just kind of dropping down to the front like this and we just see kind of like this nice gap the ga gape gaping hole here see right through it you know and 
and then do some more work to figure out what the chin sort of shape might be. It's a little more square maybe like this. I will say that, you know, something like this, you know, some of the of what I know, which is not a lot, but enough about, you know, anatomy is going to inform how I design this. If you think about human anatomy and skulls, right? I'm, I'm, I'm obviously basing a lot of this design on the little that I know about that stuff. You know, I know enough to, to just kind of make this work. And then here I might be like, oh, you know, it'd be cool. Maybe this is what happens. So these, these, there are teeth here. And they're all super sharp and they're all like bunched up right here. And they come from the, the bottom and the top. So now that there's a decision I just make right at this moment. I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Throw some sharp teeth down there for that, for our monster, you know? And then here's that eye, the other eye. And then, you know, if I want it to be a little scarier, maybe again, you, you play with the shape of the, the brow there, you just drop it over the eye and make that recessed, you know, more recessed. So this kind of goes around that carrot shape and then angles up like this, you know? And then as we move away, we slope back, you start to think about what's gonna happen with those trees, right? We need to get this a little tighter up here. That gap has to be a little, little bigger. See? Erase, draw, erase, draw, erase, draw. Um, it's amazing how you put a whole universe of imagination inside your strokes, building a very creative and efficient visual narrative. Wow, that's a nice compliment. Thank you. Um, digging this head detail. Cool. Thanks, Wade. Uh, see you, Bernadette. This monster needs to moisturize. <laughs> nice. Okay, so then, um, you know, we keep going with this. And we then say, okay, we know what's happening now in the back because we've got a little sketch here to the right to refer to. So we're gonna have those bits of tree just start to pop out. And little random directions and whatnot. Okay, so that's what's happening here. So off we go with that. That all makes sense. And this carrot, you know, if you wanted to get picky with it, you start to add little little carroty hair thingies, you know, and show the the little lines. These don't just these don't just help to add sort of a bit of texture to it. They also help to show what the form is. You know, these lines wrapping around. Help me to understand. Oh, that's a round shape. It's a cylindrical shape. Okay. Drop a little shadow under that if you want. Uh, 
Um, little shadow here. And that part of the jaw. And there's your there's your sort of uh, rough study as a close up of uh, this head for this this monster. Okay. It's not perfect, but it it does the trick. So you understand a little bit more like how this is put together. You know better than you would with maybe just that sketch right here, okay? So that's another thing you, you then could move on to as you start to figure that out. A little close-up detail there. It's an interesting part of the character. It's an important part of the character, so we want to figure that out, right? All right, so let's see what we got. We have, we have this guy, okay? He's this sort of snow. He just emerging out of the, the snow bank there. Okay. And we have our, our friend um, here, right, which was based on the sketch of, uh, it's just very rough here, the sketch idea here. All right, so there's, there's this guy. Um, so these are both very different. And that then you could decide uh, which of these is more interesting to me, maybe both. And I think this is what I'll do next week is I'll take one of these and, and paint it or, you know, I think maybe the first guy more than the second. I'm not sure. Um, but that would be fun. So, you know, to start that, I would just pick a pose that I think is sort of like the hero shot, you know, like it's more it's not just a, a turnaround or something more mechanical, so to speak. It's more of like an, an illustration to kind of sell the idea if you will. Um, so something closer to what you see here would be what I would want to do for that purpose, right? And so again, if you're joining a little later, uh, I'm drawing in Photoshop with pencils. These are custom uh, brushes. And I think you know, this is how I would do this on paper is work with pencil. Um, and to do that, I'm using at the moment, the concept pencil from the fall 2021 brush set, which you can get if you go to this little drop down menu in your brushes panel, get more brushes. You can find that there. Uh, you can also simply do a Google search where you say, get Kyle's brushes Adobe. And you, it should take you to this, this page right away. You can look at the first result or whatever. It shows you um, the link to that download brush page where you log in and, and snag them. Uh, remember that these brushes also work in Adobe Fresco, which is a free drawing app, drawing and painting app. Um, okay. So to to do that next step, something like this, uh, I would refer back to this picture. And one thing you could do is just you know extend your canvas if you want. But I, I feel like I kind of know this guy already. Um, but if you wanted to extend your canvas, you'd hit the C key, which is crop, you know, and you could just make your canvas bigger. And that's one thing you could do. And I could, I could just take this layer and hide it for a minute. And if I want to make my canvas bigger, I can just do that same thing I did a moment ago, which was edit fill, use that same pattern and knock it back to like 20%. And we're in the same place we were now. If you want to make this darker, you can always Command J, which is to duplicate that layer. And I can group those, duplicate that group, Command J again, Command E will combine that into one single layer. And if I wanted to, I could just have them up here like as reference, you know, and then I could go to town with a drawing right here. So, uh, just quickly, what I what I want to do is figure out a pose before we adjourn for the day. So I think what I would do is something like a three quarter view, as I mentioned, and you know, have like he could be maybe yelling. So we could have the head forward like this. Remember how I said this drops open this mouth, so we just kind of like 
have it like this, like raw. And there's that like little nose. This eye and the hat right there. Arms back. Okay. Pitched forward. Branches and all that out here. And maybe that's sort of our our pose there for the guy. Whoops, put the other arm back here. Ah. Maybe he's reaching out with his fingers or something. Okay, so that's my starting point for that sketch, like so. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gave you some ideas, and next week we'll pick it up again. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Please remember to be kind to one another. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And uh, I'm going to say ciao for now.